morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel Alcon, and welcome to Pre-Market Info. Jobs report is out, and it is good. Non-farm payrolls. Jobs increase 146,000. They were supposed to, or so, and 7.7% unemployment. Everything looking good on the jobs front there, Joel. Sprues are up six. Woohoo! Apple volatility. Yesterday, obviously, Apple was getting slaughtered, turned around, and rallied 30 points. That is crazy. And then we're going to do a technical look at the S&P top components here after the jobs number. Joel, take it away. Well, we uh, had a couple days hogging that $1,400 level, deja vu all over again. It's the third time we've done this in the last couple months. Uh, yesterday, we had a nice, quiet rally. Stopped at that major resistance, had a bunch of highs, uh, just under 1415 And now we've uh, we've busted through there. Now the question would be, can we remain above 1415 and uh, go up and uh, take a test at Monday's high at 1424 Sure seems like that's what's on the horizon. Yeah, you can see the big spike here we just had at 8.30 when the jobs numbers came out better than expected and the unemployment rate fell. I mean, they thought it was going to be hurting from Sandy, but really it didn't. So surprisingly, the jobs picture looks pretty darn good. Um, they obviously were expecting uh, the 93,000 got 147, so much better than expected. An unemployment rate fell to 7.7 from the expected 7.9 in last month's 7.9. So, man, surprising that Sandy didn't hurt the jobs picture overall here, and the market is loving it. Up seven. Wait, and a half wait, wait. Points. We have a we have a news flash. Um, uh, Jack Walsh does not believe the data. <laughs> Jack Walsh does not <laughs> believe the data. I don't know if I believe that data. Either. Either shocking. Who I mean, cares? who really cares, Dennis? No, we, we don't. We don't care. About we just care about the we, technicals, and what the technicals are telling us is we've got a breakout here this morning. So obviously up seven here now, looking good on the charts. Let's take it over to Apple. Oh, your favorite stock here, <laughs> Apple. Uh, well, you know, I was looking at that 5.30 level yesterday, and you just it knew it wasn't going to hold, and, uh, you know, it goes there, it dips uh, under 5.20, 5.18.63, and uh, it would have been interesting to see where you would have gotten filled on a 5.30 buy stop when it came back up, uh, because that was that filled the gap area. It took off, but now we got a real good number to look at over Apple here over the next few days, and kind of a theme we've been talking about this week with 50% percent retracements uh it had the low 50575 uh failed uh at the 605 level just before that 50 percent retracement but now we retrace this whole break and now uh, 50 percent of that happened to comes in at 550 and so we're just hugging this area here i'm looking for a day or two of, of consolidation around 550 if it could hold that i think we're going to go back up to 600 if this 550 uh can't hold over the next couple of days we may be taking a trip back down to that 50575 but i really like this 550 number today yeah it needs to hold above 550 is a key swing number here i agree with you on that um from a support perspective we kept drifting down here to this low 540s got down to 541 earlier on or 540 70 so stay above 540 and i'm going to stay bullish obviously we want to start seeing and get above 550 and start to continue the climb but if it broke down below 540 i'd really get nervous because i would take it through yesterday afternoon's low so uh, my bogey on is really the 540 area i want to stay above that we're 10 points above there right now so we're looking good obviously spoos are up nine markets looking good overall hey it's all good and fun Time to get short. No, uh, no. Uh, just uh, one note. Quick note on Apple. If it does get to five fifty three thirty one, that's yesterday's high. I wouldn't want to be short with your money. I mean, there's no. just there's nothing in there. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I don't hasten to say it's going to go to five sixty nine and a quarter, which was Wednesday's high. But uh, there's really, uh, if you are trying to short, uh, you're trying to exit along here. Five fifty three thirty one is resistance, but uh, above that level, hands are off the short button. Microsoft, you wrote that blog there yesterday, Joel, giving your bullish tone on Microsoft. You were highlighting saying if this stock can stay above that 2626 low that it set two days ago, you think there is some upside in this issue, citing some fundamentals, but morally the tech, more of the technicals. 2687, it's up 15 cents here. Joel, is Microsoft going to be off to the races today? 
Ah, well, you know, there's only, probably only 17,000 million shares at uh, 27, you know, <laughs> with that, you know, that protecting that strike price on the weekly options. Uh, but um, you do have some technicals to look at on the upside. You have a double top from Wednesdays and Thursdays highs, uh, which is 26.93 and 26.98 as we're approaching those in the pre-market. But what I'd be looking for, the main resistance number I'm focusing on today is our six, seven, and eight-day highs here at 27.36 to okay, 27.39. Yeah. So keep an eye on that. Um, above that, I mean, sometimes they blow through my six stars, but most of the time they don't. So keep an eye on that. Coming back on the downside, I mean, if this thing sniffs anywhere near settlement, uh, yeah, it'd be loaded with bids. Well, you talked me into it yesterday, Joel. I did pick a little <laughs> bit of Microsoft up there in the 2671 area. Uh, looking pretty good so far, up 18 cents here this morning, obviously. But the market is choppy. We're up 6.5 now. We're just up 9. We're still trying to digest this jobs number. Obviously, we're going to be choppy at the 930 open as well. So okay, I just uh, I want to make one more um, observation about about uh, Microsoft here, you know, since we've been talking about it a few days, you, obviously you watch things trade uh, during the regular sessions. But you were telling me yesterday in the pre-market that when uh, there was there was a buy, a real after true hours. buy out there, yeah, after hours, yeah. that someone someone was showing large bids, correct? Someone was getting hit on large. Someone was bidding it up. So this was two nights ago. The stock was closed. I think twenty. 665 or 2670 and somebody's been 2675 for 50 50,000 and he gets them and then he comes back with 2680 for 50,000 and he gets them and then he goes up to 2685 after hours and he gets them I'm like does this guy know something like what is going on that's kind of like why I got interested in buying it from the long side too because when you have a big institution somebody coming and scooping stock size up like that sometimes they know something so you know just watching the order flow can sometimes tip you off I know the Nigerian brothers watch the options for that same reason i watched the after hours for that similar reason where sometimes you know you're just watching the big buyers and the after hours can give you a little bit of a tip now not saying you know maybe he knows nothing right. maybe he's just an investor but sometimes they do know stuff too and they got a you know inkling that the stock is actually going to maybe you know outperform here and or maybe up. they just got like some algo you know some some system you know maybe they've been short you know since 30 and yeah. uh you know the algo covering it, in covering and, it. and whatever and, it, and it's not even based on a human it, it's a computer doing it and they know that they can get it in the after hours but there's other stocks in the big 10 we can talk about here um how about um how about uh ge uh, is this a little breakout here above this 2136 we head in back up to 22 looking good 2150 yeah there's a few hundred thousand offer to 2150 i can see in the buck so that's going to be your first area of resistance here this morning if it can break up above 2150 then it starts to look good. Then I guess you go and you look at this November high of 2177, but 2150 is my bogey here. Okay. All right. Um, and the oils, uh, uh, looks is looking at the pennant uh, formations of both Chevron and Exxon Mobil yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Chevron got right up to the top of that, uh, that the, where we were drawing the trend line on the pennant, 106.69. Yeah. I uh, told you to take a look at that chart after the close yesterday. Busted through there. I Dead. mean, hey, you know, where, where, one of, I mean, the way this uh, Chevron trades, I mean, where's the next resistance point? Oh, it looks great. Uh, pennant just that yesterday's move, breaking it up above that pennant. The stock looks bullish for sure. We're trading up here, obviously, this morning as well with the good jobs number. 107 is where we just ticked to. I mean, I don't know. I guess you got to go back and look at 107.67, which was high yep. on the 8th. But there's, you know, I don't think that's a very big number either. you got to really yep. start getting up in these 109s where you really start finding resistance. But that's two bucks up from here. Correct. Correct. And um, Exxon Mobil not quite getting the boost yet. Um, that needs to bust through the six day high of uh, 86.69. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be a few sellers at 89 as well in that issue. Yeah, I think you're right. I'll try to draw the trend line here. I'm not drawing it very well for our readers there. <laughs> But uh, in any regard, that 88.69 area is huge. We're at 88.29 here right now. So we're going to come up here another 20, 30 cents to pretty major resistance on Exxon Mobil. I mean, we got three, four highs up there in the 88, from 88.40 up to 88.69. So I think it could struggle to get through there today. It doesn't look as good as that Chevron chart does. 
Okay, and uh, the last stock in the Big Ten that I wanted to highlight this level, but I've been looking at uh, forever and a brother here. Uh, Wells Fargo, Dennis, is this? I, and you always know it's going to do this. You want to buy it through mm-hmm. going through thirty three, thirty three, and you know it, unless you're you're doing it, unless you're very quick in the pre market, you wouldn't have been able to do it. Look at all those highs there. Holy mackerel! Yeah. I mean, now what you would hope for is you get a high open. You know, some week longs, puke, take it down, fill the gap, 33.20, 33 and a quarter. Um, it would be loaded with bids there. I see no resistance up to 33.76 and has a gap to fill around 34. Yeah, it needs to get up and obviously above this area here. We'd like to see it break out. And if that, you know, if your whole scenario can kind of can break out and then pull back. I love it when they, they break out like that and then pull back, give you a chance to get long, and then you can hop on board. But sometimes they don't give you a chance. Sometimes they just keep rallying and you'd miss the boat but i mean we're right there at resistance right now until we can get above these highs here that we set the other day in this whole 33 33 33 40 area and we're right there right now i wouldn't get bullish just quite yet no no it's not a breakout it's a fake out huh <laughs> yeah it's right there right now so it's just looking like it could be breaking out but we're still and we we're only nickel through the high i'm just hard to say you know it's decimal laden world here we're in <laughs> it's still you could still call that a resistance area when it's only a nickel above the high so i like to see it get up there start ticking above 33.50 and then start the chart starts to look a heck of a lot better um, so just, what are you gonna do? You're gonna buy twenty thousand at thirty three forty one, and then put twenty thousand bid at thirty three twenty one, and try and get average at thirty three thirty one. I don't know how I'm gonna be playing this one. Well, Spurgo is always an interesting one. You gotta look at the other banks too, and look at your leaders. Obviously, Citigroup and Bank America have been the leaders here right now, so you want to keep them on your screen. Obviously, if you're trading Wells Fargo. Uh, just to highlight, McDonald's actually getting an upgrade here at Janney Capital. Um, this morning stock is trading up at 8901 I know it shows a tick here 8809 that's just an after over, after hours cross the real tick is up here at 8901 right now so it's up a buck big area big number for this one 8908 that was a high on October 22nd uh, we're gonna approach that in the pre-market sellers probably be a little bit ahead of that uh, at the nice round number of 89 89 17 was the pre-market high so that's your other parameter above the 89 handle 89 17 high whoo I don't know man could go to 90 but that would be one heck of a move Overall market thoughts here. We're up six and a quarter. Obviously, the decent jobs number propelling us up. 1424 was the high on December the 3rd. Can we get up there and get above there today? Our high today this morning is 1422.25. So we kind of fell short of it so far. Um, I definitely think it would be within the average daily range to you know to test that. Um, you always uh, got to keep an eye on the Globex high as the uh, you know as the big players are not only trained trading during the day sessions at night. So fourteen twenty two and a quarter right now is our high. That will be major resistance up to fourteen twenty four. Um, I think we're going to get there today if we break above fourteen twenty four. Really not much to talk about until 1431.75. That's our show for today, folks. Have a great trading day and have a great weekend. And we will be back with you guys on Monday.